let's be real, GPUs in 2025 have been disappointing so far. AMD may just be the hope and relief that gamers have been waiting for with their new Radeon 9000 series GPUs, the Radeon 9070 and the RX 9070 XT. AMD isn't trying to take over the high-end market. They're trying to be more realistic and it may have just worked out. Let's cut to the chase right at the start of the video. Here's the bottom line. The Radeon 9070 is about 10 to 12% faster than the RTX 5070 at the same price. And the Radeon RX 9070 XT is about the same performance as the RTX 5070 Ti for 150 US dollars less. That should tell you most of what you need to know for now. Thanks for watching guys. Uh, yeah. Hang on. There is more to this story though. The AMD Radeon RX 9070 and the AMD Radeon RX 9070 XT are based on the new RDNA 4 architecture. Both cards feature 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory with a 256 bit memory bus. Both cards also use PCIe 5.0 by 16 interfaces. As for pricing, the AMD Radeon RX 9070 will start at around about 549 US dollars and the Radeon RX 9070 XT will start at around about 599 US dollars. As for Australian pricing, I would say the price would start anywhere from around about 900 Aussie dollars for the 9070 and probably around about 1000 Australian dollars for the 9070 XT. AMD has also assured us that stock is going to be good and cards will be widely available globally at launch. While AMD has said this before and it's not been the case, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. There's no reference card for either of these cards as well, so the cards that you're seeing tested here in this video are both the ASUS Tough Gaming variants. To test both of these cards, I used our AMD Ryzen 7 9800X 3D test system. I also included about 13 other cards for a bit of a comparison to give you a good sample of what the performance looks like. Where FSR 3.1 is available, I also used a new feature that allows you to use FSR 4 in its place. I opted to not test the difference between PCIe 4.0 and 5.0 in this video. To be honest, the reason is because I spent four days testing all of these new cards, including the Nvidia cards, and every time we do a launch video, our video just gets buried by people botting views, so it feels like it's a bit of a waste of time. I might as well be honest with you guys about the situation, but also feel free to pause the video at any time and take a look at these graphs for a little bit longer because it may help you make a better decision, and if you're not subscribed, do that as well while you're here. Let's start off with Shadow of the Tomb Raider with the highest preset with no upscaling. First up at 1440p, the 9070 is about 1% faster than the RTX 5070 and the 9070 XT is around about 11% faster than the 5070. At 4K, the 9070 is about 5% faster than the 5070 and the 9070 XT is around about 17% faster than the 5070. Next up, Unigen Superposition. First of all, with 1080p Extreme, the Radeon RX 9070 is about 7% slower than the RTX 5070. However, the 9070 XT is around about 7% faster than the RTX 5070. Over to 1440p Custom with Depth of Field and Motion Blur disabled, we are seeing that the Radeon 9070 is about 1% slower than the RTX 5070 and the 9070 XT is around about 8% faster than the 5070 on average. Remember guys, this is a DX11 benchmark. At 4K optimized, the 9070 has the same average performance as the 5070 with 17% lower 1% low performance. However, the 9070 XT is about 13% faster than the RTX 5070. Next up is Horizon Zero Dawn Remastered with the very high preset. This uses one of either DLSS, FSR 3.1 or FSR 4 with them set to quality mode. At 1440p, the Radeon RX 9070 is around about 9% faster than the RTX 5070 and the 9070 XT outpaces the RTX 5070 Ti by about 3% here. At 4K, the 9070 is 26% faster than the RTX 5070 
while the Radeon RX 9070 XT is around about 4% faster than the RTX 5070 Ti. Over to Cyberpunk 2077 with the Ultra preset with no ray tracing and using either DLSS 3, DLSS 4, FSR 3.1 or FSR 4. Starting off with 1440p, the Radeon RX 9070 is about 15% faster than the RTX 5070 and the 9070 XT is around about 8% faster than the RTX 5070 Ti. At 4K, the 9070 is about 16% faster than the RTX 5070 and the 9070 XT is around about 12% faster than the 5070 Ti. What's interesting is the 9070 has around the same performance at 4K as a $200 more expensive GPU. Moving on to Call of Duty Black Ops 6, we're using the Ultra preset with either DLSS or FSR 3.1 or FSR 4 set to performance mode. At 1440p, the Radeon RX 9070 is about 22% faster than the RTX 5070 and around about 3% faster than the 5070 Ti as well. Whereas the 9070 XT is around about 8% faster than the 5070 Ti and a whopping 28% faster than the 5070. Are you ready for this? At 4K, the Radeon RX 9070 is around about 28% faster than the RTX 5070. It's also 2% faster than the 5070 Ti and around about the same performance as the 7900 XTX. While the 9070 XT is around about 47% faster than the RTX 5070, 17% faster than the 5070 Ti, and 3% faster than the 5080. Lastly, onto the toughest benchmark of them all, Black Myth Wukong. We're using the cinematic preset, which is brutal, and I set either DLSS or FSR to performance mode with full ray tracing enabled on all cards. And yeah, you'll see what happens. At 1440p, there's no surprises here with every single AMD card being significantly slower than every single Nvidia card. However, the 9070 is 47% better at ray tracing than the 7900 XTX and the 9070 XT is around about 65% better. While those numbers are pretty low, that's still a significant gen on gen uplift, but compared to the Nvidia cards, yeah, you get the idea. Moving over to 4K, we see a little bit of a shift in the ray tracing performance with the 9070 XT only being around about 8% slower than the GeForce RTX 5070. But again, that is nothing to brag about. Ray tracing on AMD is still a huge miss. But it's not all bad because over all of that testing, we can calculate the overall average performance of all the cards to give you an idea of how both the 9070 and 9070 XT compares. At 1440p, the Radeon RX 9070 is around about 5% faster than the RTX 5070, while the 9070 XT is around about 14% faster than the RTX 5070. As for gen on gen uplift, this one is a bit tricky, but let's just say that the 7900 XT and the 7900 GRE are our points of reference. The Radeon RX 9070 is around about 17% faster than the 7900 GRE and about 1% faster than the 7900 XT. Whereas the Radeon RX 9070 XT is around about 9% faster than the 7900 XT and about 26% faster than the 7900 GRE. That 7900 XTX though, that's still going so strong here for AMD. At 4K though, the Radeon RX 9070 is about 13% faster than the 5070. It's also around the same performance as the 7900 XT and around about 19% faster than the 7900 GRE. The 9070 XT shares the same performance as the 5070 Ti. It's around 27% faster than the RTX 5070, 13% faster than the 7900 XT, and is 34% faster than the 7900 GRE. As for power consumption, at idle, the Radeon RX 9070 consumed around 7 watts of power, and at full load, 
he was pulling around about 238 watts of power. As for the Radeon RX 9070 XT, it idled around about 8 watts of power draw and at full load pulled around 285 watts of power. Now, keep in mind, the maximum board power for the 9070 XT is 304 watts, but we didn't see it pull that much with a stress test. What that's telling me is the 9070 XT has a lot more headroom and a lot more performance left on the table. On the thermal side for both of these cards, they both idled at that 45 degrees Celsius range while both memory temperatures sat at 64 degrees Celsius. When fully loaded over an hour, the GPUs themselves didn't rise that much in temperature. However, the memory on both cards were in the 80s with the 9070 XT creeping up to 88 degrees Celsius. That is very warm and possibly something to keep an eye out for. Alrighty, we've got all the data. What does that all mean for these new Radeon 9000 cards? Firstly, it seems as though AMD may have understood the assignment here. Make price competitive products while also delivering on performance. While neither the 9070 or the 9070 XT is supposed to be a high-end card, the 9070 XT in particular is punching well above where it should be if, and only if, we use NVIDIA as a baseline for price, which we all know is pretty bullshit to begin with. $599 US dollars for a card that is keeping up with a card that has an MSRP of $749 is pretty hilarious. And we all know that NVIDIA's 5070 Ti MSRP is misleading as it is anyway. While it could be argued that NVIDIA is still the king of ray tracing and the RT performance is excellent, I don't think that the argument for DLSS is as strong as it used to be anymore. While FSR4 is not perfect, it did significantly increase the performance in all of the testing. I wish I recorded some of the pre-testing to show you guys, but FSR4 in some scenarios did increase the performance by up to 10% on average over FSR3. That is a win in itself. What's even more interesting is you can use FSR4 even if a title doesn't support it. Love it or hate it, guys. Upscaling is a thing and most people use it. As for the ray tracing performance with the Radeon 9000 cards, it's still not great from AMD here. But for me at least, I don't really play or use any games that utilize ray tracing. So personally, I don't really care. But if you do care, let me know in the comments. The bottom line is AMD has made some claims. They've delivered on some of them and they've not delivered on others. But the gist of these new Radeon cards goes a little something like this. For 549, you can get this, the Radeon RX 9070. It's 5% faster at 1440p and 13% faster than the 5070 at 4K at the same price, which we know the 5070 won't be. Or for 599 US dollars, you can get this, the Radeon RX 9070 XT, which is about 5% slower at 1440p than the 5070 Ti, but the same performance at 4K as the 5070 Ti for 150 US dollars less. I know which one I'd be choosing and it doesn't rhyme with chlamydia. <laughs> it's a joke guys. Come on, I'm just trying to make you laugh here. We're all too serious about GPUs at the moment. If the choice was between the 9070 and the 9070 XT on their own, I'd say spend the extra 50 US dollars and get the 9070 XT. It's a much smarter choice for 10 to 12% more performance and only 9% more money. It makes sense here, guys. But knowing what we know about the NVIDIA 50 Series 70 class cards and now what we know about the Radeon 9070 and the 9070 XT, I know which way I'd go and it's not with NVIDIA because the price and performance from NVIDIA just isn't right. That's not to say that people aren't still going to buy GeForce cards because we know how dominant NVIDIA is in this space. What I'm saying is NVIDIA has let gamers down. NVIDIA has forgotten their roots in favor of profiting on AI and data center, two places in which they can dictate the market and make up what things are worth. On the other side, while AMD does compete in both of those spaces too and is equally as guilty from profiting in the same way, it's good to see that AMD hasn't forgotten their roots and is trying to deliver some relief in pricing to gamers for products 
that simply do not cost as much as NVIDIA's products, all while offering better value and in most cases offering better performance for less money. There's been a lot of GPU testing here and I need a break from all of this. But as always, I'm just giving you numbers from a bunch of tests that I ran and ultimately it's your money. I can't make you spend it. But now that you're armed with the information and the whole story, the power is back in your hands.